The topic is wave propagation on transmission lines. How the electromagnetic wave behaves while propagating on a transmission lines. So here we have some physical description. So we consider a lossless line here. Lossless line means there is no loss. All the power which is which is launched at the input side, all of the power is arrived at the output end. That transmission line is called lossless line means there is no loss of power while propagating from source to load. So, for wave propagation, we consider a basic transmission line circuit. Here, the transmission line is connected by a source in the form of voltage and load in the form of resistance. Both the source and load are connected with the help of switch S1 and S2. Initially, the switch S1 is closed and S2 is open. As soon as the switch S1 is closed, the source, voltage source is acting and incident current start flowing that is denoted by I plus. Now we take a point on this transmission line. At this point we consider a boundary that is denoted by this dotted line. So here we visualize that as the incident current start flowing from point to point this in assume boundary can also start moving along the transmission line with the with some velocity that velocity is called wave velocity denoted by u now at this boundary the incident voltage that is v plus is equals to v naught that is the input voltage because this is parallel. So, as soon as the, the incident current or incident voltage propagate through the transmission line, the assumed boundary can also move with some velocity. That velocity is called wave velocity. Now, this boundary, this instantaneous boundary is called wave front. So we can say that the wave front is a boundary at which both the current and voltages are discontinuous. Means to the left side of this boundary, the line is charged with a to the right side of this boundary, the remaining line is yet to be charged. That is, it carries no current. So, the section left to this wavefront is charged to voltage V0 and carrying a incident current I+. Plus. This will happen, this happens when switch S1 is closed and S2 is open. Now, as the line charges, the wave front, the boundary, the wave front moves from left to right with a velocity u. That velocity is called wave velocity. And our task is to determine this wave velocity. On reaching load end, all or a fraction of the wave voltage of current will reflect. 
which depend on what the line is attached means when the switch s2 is open means load r is disconnected then all the wave front incident voltage is reflected but in case when the switch s2 is closed then load r is connected and while connecting the load r most of the wave front incident voltage is transmitted leaving some fraction of the voltage which will be reflected in backward direction so in this way there is a reflection of wave so we can say that while propagating of electromagnetic wave through a transmission line there is a conducting of transmission line from point to point and with the help of some charging and discharging that is per unit length basis so we can construct a transmission line with the help of element that is capacitor and inductor so here we see a model of transmission line and that is unit length of the transmission line and it has some elements the basic elements here is inductor and capacitor so similarly the transmission line is replaced by a energy storing elements that is capacitor and inductor inductor is connected in series while the capacitor is connected in shunt so here is source is voltage source and the load is resistance r so first initially as s1 is closed s1 is closed the current begin to increase the incident current start increasing in inductor l1 now this inductor l1 allows the capacitor c1 to charge fully to voltage v0 now this charge capacitor c1 start increasing the current in inductor l2 which further allow capacitor 2 to, to charge fully and one by one we get a capacitor c3 to charge fully but here the switch s2 is open so in this case we get a transmission line charged fully so the wave front location the wave front location is a point between two adjacent capacitor that is the location of the wave front is between the two capacitor which has some difference in their charge level and the the velocity the speed of this wave front that is the wave velocity depend upon how fast the inductor charge or capacitor charge to full voltage means as as soon as the inductor and capacitor charges very fast in that case the wave front velocity is greater so 
to make the charging of L and C fast, the value of L and C are lower. So we can say that the wave velocity is faster if value of inductor and capacitor are lower. So the wave velocity is equals to 1 upon under root LC. L and C are specified per unit length. Means here the transmission line is observed per unit length basis. Now we note one point. As soon as the transmission line is charged fully, leaving switch S2 open, the battery is connected here. Now, now we close the switch S2. Now from figure we see that while closing the switch S2, the capacitor C3 is connected with load resistance R. So the charge capacitor C3 get discharged through load R and this discharging is continuous. First the capacitor C3 discharge followed by its adjacent capacitor C2 and then its adjacent capacitor C1. So this is a type of ladder network. As soon as the ladder network is completely discharged, a voltage pulse is formed across load. And due to this pulse formation across the load R, this ladder network or ladder configuration is called pulse forming network. 